So people are these days asking, those of us who live in the West, can we make hijrah? Do we have to make hijrah? Are we able to stay in these lands and have our families with us here? Wallahi, I, I've never thought that one day I will be talking about these issues. When I was younger myself, living in Sheffield and when we were youth and everything, I never thought a day is going to come while I'm still alive where I'm going to see with my own eyes young Muslims leaving Islam. But this is the reality right now. And no one is immune from this. No family is entitled to having a life which is free of problems. Every family father, every mother. Wallahi, whether you are the biggest sheikh or the most normal layman, if whoever you are, your kids are targeted. Your kids will be affected. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'een Ihdina Al-Sirat Al-Mustaqeem سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين كتب عليكم القتال وهو كره لكم وعسى أن تكرهوا شيئا وهو خير لكم وعسى أن تحبوا شيئا وهو شر لكم والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون يسألونك عن الشهر الحرام قتال فيه قل قتال فيه كبير وصد عن سبيل الله وكفر به والمسجد الحرام وإخراج أهله منه أكبر عند الله والفتنة أكبر من القتل ولا يزالون يقاتلونكم حتى يردوكم عن دينكم إن استطاعوا ومن يرتدد منكم عن دينه فيمت وهو كافر فأولئك حبطت أعمالهم في الدنيا والآخرة وأولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون إن الذين آمنوا والذين هاجروا وجاهدوا في سبيل الله وجاهدوا في سبيل الله أولئك يرجون رحمة الله والله غفور رحيم بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله تعالى before we begin our brothers uh, the session or the Fajr reflection Fajr uh, prayer time tomorrow will be 6.30 which means like just 15 minutes earlier insha'Allah ta'ala and okay Jazakallah khair uh, just also another quick reminder and um, yes yeah, sometimes when we come uh, when we are running a little bit late and we're trying to catch uh, mashallah catch up with the salah and we are driving as well and we might not actually park our cars in the right places or in the right way and dear brothers also always remember we are all ambassadors of islam and when we park our cars remember our neighbors they don't have time to read the quran but they have time to read us they are reading us all the time they are reading our actions just imagine the neighbors who are non-muslims that live around the mosque when they read our actions they don't know that we have this beautiful quran inside the masjid and we are getting guidance from this Quran every single day but when they see the way we park they might say who are these people okay what religion are they on what religion are they upon their religion must be a misguided religion why are they doing things like this so inshallah ta'ala and it's very important that we take and heed from this and inshallah ta'ala yes the prophet sallam told us when you are on your way to, when you are on your way to come to the masjid you are already in, in a state of salah and every second, every minute you are coming towards the masjid, Alhamdulillah, you are already in salah. So whatever you catch from the salah, Alhamdulillah, pray with the imam. Whatever you miss, inshallah ta'ala, make it up. So don't worry, in the light ta'ala, if you park, if you park your car appropriately, inshallah ta'ala, you will get ajr for that, extra ajr. Do you know if you are consciously parking your car in the right place, 
even though you're going to be late for the salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you extra for, for, for that effort. MashaAllah, you're looking for the right place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who do that. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers, the ayah that we started from today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Kutiba alaykum al qital wa huwa kurhul lakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, fighting has been made obligatory upon you as believers, okay, as Muslims. We have to understand the context. Remember the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for 13 years, he was in Mecca. And his companions were, per were being persecuted. His companions were being harmed day in, day out. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was being told, Fasbir sabran jameela. Be patient, be patient, okay? And also the companions were being told to be patient. Remember yesterday we mentioned the story of Khabbab ibn al-Art. Khabbab ibn al-Art. And that companion, he came to the Prophet sallam. He was, he was complaining, he was like saying, Ya Rasulullah, look what is happening to us. And Khabbab, he didn't come just because something small happened to him. Subhanallah, the, the lady that used to own him, she persecuted him really, really severely. And he used to be, do you know his back used to be burned? Subhanallah. She used fire to punish him because he was a Muslim. And Khabbab, it was too much for him. And also the other companions. So he went to the Prophet asking, Ya Rasulullah, make dua for us. We are suffering. We are being beaten. We are being persecuted day in, day out. And this has been going on for years and years right now. Please make dua for us. And you remember yesterday what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him. He reminded him, he reminded him what used to happen to those who came before us. And then also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the end of that hadith, he has said something that was very powerful, which I haven't mentioned yesterday. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the end of that hadith, when Allah subhanahu when the Prophet ﷺ reminded the companions how those who came before us, what used to happen to them, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi has said, Wallahi layutimanna Allahu hadha al-amr hatta yasir al-rakibu min san'a ila hadra mawt la yakhafu illa Allah wa al-dhib ala ghanamihi walakinnakum qawmun tasta'jilun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet Sallallahu said, be patient, Okay, stay calm, ya khabbab. And remember, a time is gonna come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, by Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this religion a successful religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this religion a successful religion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will complete this religion. And a time is gonna come when a traveler will travel from Sana'a all the way to Hadramaut and he will have no fear of anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will be worried for example uh, a predator might come and attack his flock of ghanam for example his flock of sheep or goats but you guys you are in haste you're rushing you want victory very quickly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this religion victorious but you guys are in rush the ayah that we're starting from right now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kutiba alaykum al qital wa huwa kurhul lakum. Okay? Fighting has been made obligatory upon you, believers, though you disliked it. Do you know nobody likes to fight? Fighting is not, is not an easy thing. As a human being, we don't like fighting. We don't want to cause ourselves harm, neither do we like to cause harm to other people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kutiba alaykum al qital wa huwa kurhul lakum. Okay? وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا The principle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to mention in this ayah is very powerful. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ You may dislike something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perhaps you dislike something which is good for you though. How often do we dislike something but at the end we find out this was actually good for us. Subhanallah. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ You may like something sometimes but at the end you find out that this was absolutely harmful for you. And this is a very important principle. Always put this principle in front of your eyes. How many times have we seen someone who has missed his flight and he was cursing the, uh, the, the airline people and he was cursing the person who was driving him to the airport. He was cursing the, 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 you know, the traffic jam that, that happened just before the airport. So he was doing all of this. But after he missed that flight, shortly after that he finds out that flight has crashed and everybody was dead. 
How does he feel that time? He just says, oh, alhamdulillah. <laughs> I was not. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ Anything that comes your way in this life that you dislike, always remember, maybe there is khair in it for you. If you miss a flight, for example, if you miss something that you were looking forward to, if you, for example, apply for a job and you don't get it, don't say like, why didn't I get it? Say, alhamdulillah, maybe there's khair in it for me that I don't get this job. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا You may like something, but there is evil in it for you. وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ And Allah said, وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell us a question that was asked the Prophet sallallahu a question that someone has asked the Prophet So, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الشَّهْرِ الْحَرَامِ What did we say the other day? Imam al-Razi rahimahullah ta'ala has mentioned and that Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma has said, this ummah, they have asked their prophet only 14 questions. And he said, eight of them are in Surah Al-Baqarah. Eight of them are in Surah Al-Baqarah. So among the eight is the following question. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الشَّهْرِ الْحَرَامِ قِتَالٍ فِيهِ Okay, they will ask you, O Muhammad, O Prophet of Allah, about fighting in the sacred month. Say fighting during these months is a great sin is a great sin. But hindering others from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rejecting him and expelling the worshippers from the sacred mosque is greater sin in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For persecution is far worse than killing and they will not stop fighting you till until they turn you away from your faith. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if they can, and whoever among you renounces their own faith and dies a disbeliever, their deeds will become void in this life and in the hereafter. This is a long ayah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions some powerful stuff. But let us ask ourselves, what brought about this question? What is it that brought about this particular question? There is an incident which is called the Nakhla incident. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has sent a group of companions made up of, of uh, less than 10 companions. And there were maybe around seven of them, seven, eight, or less than 10. And the head of that group was Abdullah ibn Jahsh. Among them was Amar ibn Yasir, the great companion Amar ibn Yasir. Also Abu Hudayfa ibn Utba ibn Rabi'ah, and Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas. They were part of this expedition. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave the leader of the group, Abdullah ibn Jahsh, a letter. He said to him, do not read this letter until you reach such a place. Just imagine now he's the leader. He was given, it's like, these are like special forces, okay? They have been given a task. So now they, yeah, they have to carry out this task. So the Prophet Sallallahu has given him a letter and said, do not open the letter until you get to a such place. And then when they got there, Abd and Abdullah ibn Jahsh read the letter. And when he read the letter to the companions, this is going to tell them which direction that they have to go, what they have to do. And also it gives the people the option to come back. So the Prophet has said to Abdullah ibn, Abdullah ibn Jahsh, give those who are with you the option to either go with you and fulfill the mission or to, to give them the, the option to come back and not fulfill that mission. So they were given the option. And this incident has happened before the Battle of Badr. It happened before the Battle of Badr. So the Prophet Wasallam, where was he sending the companions to? He was sending to a place called Nakhla. So this is beyond Mecca. Remember the Prophet and his companions, now they're in Medina. So these companions, they are being told, go beyond the lines of the enemy. They have to cross, they have to go over mid Mecca and go past Mecca and then get information for the Prophet Wasallam. So the Prophet Wasallam has sent them as eyes, okay? So to gather information about the caravans, the caravan that belongs to the Meccans, the Quraysh. So they were actually gathering intelligence information. So they were told you have to go past Mecca. And imagine these companions, they are known by the Meccans. If they were seen, if they are caught, they will definitely be killed. So this is a, a, this is a very serious mission. So it's quite dangerous. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said to the companions, you have the option to either go all the way or you can come back if you don't want to go. So now Abdullah ibn Jahsh, he read the letter to them, said this is where we're going. So now they've gone to the destination, which was Nakhla. And 
What happened at that time was they actually came across a caravan, but this caravan was a small caravan and only few men were guarding it. And among them was a man called Al-Hakam ibn Kaysan, Al-Mughira ibn Uthman, Wa Amr ibn Al-Hadrami, Wa Abdullah ibn Al-Mughira. So what happened now? The companions, they thought, we need to go and get these guys and their caravan. So they have attacked the caravan. Some of them, they have escaped and they have killed one of them called Amr ibn al-Hadrami. So he was the first person who has been killed by the Muslims. Amr ibn al-Hadrami. And now they're going to capture two prisoners who were also guarding that caravan. So al-Hakam ibn Kaysan and al-Mughira ibn Uthman, they will be caught. So what is going to happen right now, they will be brought back. So Abdullah ibn Jahsh and his group, the companions, they caught the caravan, the whole caravan, and also a couple of prisoners, and they brought it back to Medina. But by now, there's going to be a big propaganda against the Muslims. The Muslims are going to be accused of committing a major, major <laughs> blunder. And what is this blunder? Can the Muslims or can someone actually remember those days? We, as, as you know, we have four sacred months. And the Arabs during that time, they never used to fight one another during the sacred month. They used to honor those months. And the Muslims were accused of killing someone during the day of one of those sacred months, which was the first day of Rajab. We are in the month of what? Which month are we in right now? The month of Rajab. So the Muslims were accused of actually killing that particular individual during the month of Rajab. But the companions, they thought this was the day before. So they, they counted it as the day before. So now imagine Abdullah ibn Jahash and his, mashallah, comrades and his, his companions, they're back. When they came back, they've told the Prophet what happened and everything. But the Kuffar of Quraysh and the Yahud of Medina and all the Kuffar of Medina, they started actually accusing the Muslims of going against the norms and also not honoring the sacred months. And they said, how come Muhammad is claiming to be a righteous man? He's claiming to be that he's sent by God and he has no respect for these months. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has sent this ayat. The Prophet sallallahu at the beginning, he didn't know what to do. So he told Abdullah ibn Jahsh and his, his group, his, the army, that, the, 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 the small group that he had with him, and also the caravan and the prisoners. He said to them, I'm not going to make any judgment, judgment yet, so wait until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells me something. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed this ayah. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الشَّهْرِ الْحَرَامِ قِتَالٍ فِيهِ قُلْ قِتَالٌ فِيهِ كَبِيرٌ So the ulama of Islam, what did they, what did they say? الْجَمْهُورُ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ تَحْرِيمَ الْقِتَالِ فِي الْأَشْهُرِ الْحُرُمْ مَنْسُوخٌ بِالْأَمْرِ بِقِتَالِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ حيث, حيث so the the majority of the scholars are of the view that the prohibition of fighting during the sacred months was abrogated by the command to fight the polytheists wherever they are found. So this is the majority view of the ulama. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah, he continues. We haven't got the time to go through the details of the ayah, but let us continue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in this ayah. ثُمَّ أَخْبَرَ تَعَالَىٰ أَنَّهُمْ لَنْ يَزَالُوا يُقَاتِلُونَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَيْسَ غَرَضُهُمْ فِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ وَقَتْلِهِمْ وَإِنَّمَا غَرَضُهُمْ أَنْ يُرْجِعُهُمْ عَنْ دِينِهِمْ Okay, this is the reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to the companions, these people who are after you, these mushrikun who are fighting you, okay, they don't want to just kill you and take your wealth. They want you to leave Islam. They want you to take away from the religion of Islam. That is their main aim. That's their objective. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا يَزَارُونَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ حَتَّى يَرُدُّوكُمْ عَنْ دِينِكُمْ إِنِ اسْتَطَاعُوا If they can. That's, what, that's, that's the main goal, is to cause you to leave Islam and to become a, a non-Muslim all over again. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ يَرْتَدِدْ مِنْكُمْ عَنْ دِينِهِ فَيَمُتْ وَهُوَ كَافِرْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ حَبِطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And whoever among you renounces their own faith and dies as a disbeliever, what will happen? Their deeds will become void in this life and in the hereafter. So if somebody leaves Islam, imagine someone was a Muslim for 10, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and then he leaves Islam. All of the good things he's done, they will disappear. Khalas, that will be the end of it. But Imam al-Sa'id, he has said, also what Allah tells us in this ayah is, 
أولئك حبط تعمالهم في الدنيا والآخرة أولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون What Allah سبحانه وتعالى also tells us in this ayah is that if someone makes توبة from ردة imagine someone apostatizes from the religion of Islam they leave the religion of Islam then they come back what will happen Allah سبحانه وتعالى will restore their good deeds for them remember this sometimes It's easy to come across these days as someone who was Muslim to begin with, and now they left Islam, now they want to make tawbah. They may ask you this question and say, I have been a non-Muslim, or I was an apostate for two, three years. Now I want to come back. What will happen if I want to make tawbah? Will I get my ajr that I've done before? All the good deeds I've done in the past before I left, this, before, before I left the religion of Islam? You're going to say to them, yes. Yes, if you come back, And you make sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will reinstate and restore for you all the good deeds that you have done. After that ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell us, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَٰئِكَ يَرْجُونَ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ أُولَٰئِكَ يَرْجُونَ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Allah is going to tell us the reward of the devout. Surely those who have believed immigrated and struggled in the way of Allah, meaning they fought against the enemies of Islam, okay, they fought for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they can hope for Allah's mercy, and Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. And then Imam al-Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala has said, هذه الأعمال الثلاثة هي عنوان السعادة. Subhanallah. Look at what he said. This refers to, he said, this refers to the deeds that are the basis of being blessed. Okay, what are these deeds? Three of them. Iman, Hijrah, and Jihad. These three things. And he's going to tell us the following. Imam uh, Saudi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he's going to tell us the following. And for example, he gives us the definition, like about Iman, he said, if you ask about Iman, he said, the main feature of which is being true, servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or having iman and from them it may be known to what extent a person is a winner or a loser with regard to faith do not ask about it is virtue it's virtue okay how can you ask about something which is the factor that differentiates between those who are blessed those who are blessed and those who are doomed between the people of paradise and the people of hell this is a factor which determines whether a person's good deeds will be accepted from him if it is absent then no obligatory or uh, or sunnah good deed will be accepted from him what about as for migration when it comes to making hijrah ikhwani the concept of hijrah وما أدراك ما الهجرة. The concept of hijra. Look at what the Imam رحمه الله تعالى has said here. He said what hijra refers to is the following. This refers to leaving loved ones with whom one grew up in order to please Allah سبحانه وتعالى. The migrant leaves his homeland, his property, his family, his friends, seeking to draw closer to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and to support his religion. Okay, so people are these days asking, those of us who live in the West, can we make hijrah? Do we have to make hijrah? Are we able to stay in these lands and, 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 and have our families with us here? These, question, these questions are very difficult questions. And Muhammad Ali on his own cannot answer them. I cannot give you an answer and say to you guys, stay here never leave and neither can i say to you you have to back up your bags tomorrow and leave because these this is a very very difficult issue and it's a very important concept okay if you if you're not sure about how you're going to end up subhanallah your, yourself subhanallah your iman is in danger the iman of your family is in danger subhanallah none of us doubts as parents whenever we meet whenever we sit together All we talk about is how concerned we are for our families. And the reality is, we are concerned for our own selves, we are concerned for our families, our kids, and we are seeing young people losing their religion day in, day out. Any imam will tell you, anyone who's in the da'wah will tell you the messages that they receive daily, they will tell you the emails that they receive daily, the concerns that 
they receive from uh, from parents and so the the young people themselves will come to you and say to you i i i have a doubt in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i doubt the religion of islam okay some some of this, the young people t of today are very different to the young people of t of yesterday the young people of today they will come to you as a parent without hiding anything they will say to you i do not believe what you believe I don't care about this religion that you have. They will say it to your face. They won't hide it. Okay? And you will be in a shock. I have been told stories where young people came to their parents and they told them this is who they are. Okay? They left the religion of Islam and the father became so unwell he was admitted to the hospital out of shock. But it's becoming normal right now. Nobody is actually bothered. Khalas, yes. Everybody, like every household, you might find one or two people who have left Islam. But people are hiding it. But that's the reality. Sometimes young people don't say anything, but sometimes they do say something. They say, I left Islam. Okay, I don't believe in this stuff. And some of them will even say, they're, just, they're not just going to say they've left Islam. They will also say, I've left the gender that I was in, the gender that I was created in. They will tell you that. This is, this is the reality, Ikhwani. How much longer can we hold on? Subhanallah. This is the reality. And it's going to get tougher and tougher. I'm going to tell you this. It's just going to get harder and harder. No one should ever think things will improve. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا مِنْ زَمَنْ إِلَّا الَّذِي بَعْدَهُ أَشَّرٌ مِنْهُ Wallahi, year after year, things will become more difficult. I don't want to lie to you. This is the reality. It will only get worse and worse. Ten years ago, there were things that we never used to think about. But now they became a reality. Ten years from today, I don't know what this world is going to look like. What our kids will be looking at. What, what will our kids look like? Where are they going to end up? Where, where are we going to end up? Subhanallah. It's so dangerous, Ikhwani. Okay? So everyone, you should be very careful. And you have to, you have to, you have to seek advice from the people of knowledge. Think about your own situation. Okay? And, and take action according to your ability. Take action according to your own ability. Fattakullaha mastata'atum. La yukallifullahu nafsan. Each and every one of us, we have certain abilities, okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our own situations. Each and every one of us. Allah is not going to judge us all the same way, okay? Some of us are able to leave. Some of us have to stay here. They can't leave and go anywhere, okay? They have no other place, okay? So you have to look at your own case, okay? Some of us, maybe some of our kids have already left, <laughs> Maybe we have some whom we can save. Okay, think about it. Think about it. This is so. Inna ladina aman wa ladina hajaru wa jahadu fi sab. Ulaik yarjuna rahmatullah. What did the Imam say? Ulaik yarjuna. You will only hope that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is going to help you if you do your own bit. You can, we can't just sit around and say Allah is going to take care of everything. We have to do whatever we have to do, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will take care of our affairs. That's when you can have raja and hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But doing nothing and just sitting around and saying, oh, I'm comfortable. And then you hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to help you. That's not going to happen. We have to do action first. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help is going to come. Inna ladheena amanu wa ladheena hajaru wa jahadu fi sabi'li lillah. Ulaika yarjura rahmatullah. Those are the ones who are hoping the rahmah of Allah, the mercy of Allah. That's the only time we're going to get the mercy of Allah. When we do our own bit. I don't want to go on and on, but this is where I have to stop today. I just want to bring this point to your, to your, to your mind. Ikhwani, think very hard. And remember, recently we went past the ayah. Am kuntum shuhada'a idh hadara Ya'qub al-mawt idh qala li banihi ma ta'buduna min ba'di. That question. When you're going to tell your kids and ask your kids, who are you going to worship after I die? Who are you going to worship? Subhanallah. This is a very critical question. Very important question. As a parent, as I said before, as parents, sometimes we will be busy at the end of our lives or the kids will be very busy with what? What inheritance everybody's going to get? What share of the inheritance? People are arguing over inheritance and their father is about to die. Okay? And the father, 
he's not concerned. So the, as a father, you have to be, you should be gathering your kids together always, every, every now and then, and tell them, guys, what religion are you upon? If I, if I was to die today, who are you going to worship? What religion are you going to be on, upon? Okay, these are very important questions. Very, very important questions. And this, this is, wallahi, I, there were times when I never, I've never thought that one day I will be talking about these issues. When I was younger myself, living in Sheffield and when we were youth and everything, I never thought a day is gonna come while I'm still alive where I'm going to see with my own eyes young Muslims leaving Islam. SubhanAllah, but this is the reality right now, okay? And no one is immune from this. No family is entitled to having a life which is free of problems. Every father, every mother, wallahi, whether you are the biggest sheikh or the, 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 the most normal layman, okay? If whoever you are, your kids are targeted. Your kids will be affected. That's the reality. Okay, do not think, mashallah, Sheikh such and such's kids are safe. Wallahi, Sheikh such and such's kids is not safe. They're not safe. No one's child is safe. All of us were in it. Okay? The only ones that will be saved are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves them. This is quite dangerous. Very, very, very dangerous. As parents, take this matter very, very seriously. I know sometimes we are crying, subhanAllah, day and night in the house. We know we are concerned, we're so concerned, okay? Some parents, they're not really concerned. They're working seven days a week. They got no time to even think, okay? And then one day they will see the reality, okay? And that will be too late. Those of us who are awake and concerned, we can see, subhanAllah, the situation is getting harder and harder. So inshallah ta'ala, we have to do our part. Do your best. Educate your kids as much as you can. Bring them to the masajid. Help them out as much as you can. Seek advice all the time. Okay, sit down with them. Give them time. Give, give the kids time to talk to them. Okay, at least have one or two sessions a week where you are able to read the tafsir of the Quran together or seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi These two are very powerful. Do you know the tafsir and the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi They're very powerful. Okay, go through these, the Quran and also the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I have advised you in the past as well, I have advised you to tell the kids of the family to watch, do you know the, uh, do you know the, uh, we have a regular lesson on Saturdays, Asma'ullah al-Husna, the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and his attributes. Our Ustaz, Ustaz uh, Hisham, he does that lesson and I told you before, this lesson is a critical lesson, it's a very important lesson, okay? If anybody is not able to make it here, I told you before, you should encourage the family back in the house that they should watch the videos, these lessons, okay? Even if they miss the first few episodes right now, they should go and catch up with it, inshallah ta'ala, because this is a very important lesson. It connects you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will reconnect you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's very, very important. And I'm gonna urge all of you, inshallah ta'ala, to remember that. So, jazakumullah khairan for your patience. I'm sorry to give you hard information, okay? Some difficult realities, but this is the reality. I cannot hide it, okay? I cannot keep it secret and say, okay, I am being honest to my people. I, ha I have to be as honest as I can be to you guys. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah protect us all, inshallah ta'ala, protect our children. Jazakumullah khair for your patience. Assalamu alaikum.